Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Block prep for the 1113 project continues here. Um, right now I'm looking at the deck surface, um, trying to determine uh, if anything's gonna need to be done uh, machining wise with this. I've just finished, or I'm just finishing, I should say, running a, a piece of crocus cloth over the surface. Um, I got a good sanding block inside. This will uh, easily identify any possible high spots that I have on here. I can then uh, address those and then we'll do a, uh, a surface check with a calibrated straight edge after that. See what we're running and see what's going to need to be done to it, if anything. So stay tuned. Well, I'm gonna say already, I like what I see. Um, I really haven't found any high spots anywhere and we're still looking really good around all the coolant ports where those ceiling rings actually contact. No excessive pitting. Uh, the actual ring contact area looks really good. I don't see any low spots. So I'll get the straight edge out next with a feeler gauge. We'll check this thing both the long way and crossways. See what we're running for flatness. So there are a few very critical areas that you want to look at, especially on this block. I'm going to really be scrutinizing the areas between the cylinder bores. You don't want to have any low spots in here since that head gasket will, sit, will seal Sorry, right on the tops of the new sleeves. I want to make sure we don't have any dips in here and that would indicate that all of our sleeve tops are going to be on even plane with one another. Pull this protector strip off. This is the machined straight edge right here and it's pretty simple to use it. You just go in conjunction with the feeler gauge. I've got the five thousandths thick spade pulled out right now. And Cat really wasn't that worried about uh, block deck spec back in the 1930s. They don't even give me um, any kind of a spec in the service manual for this so I'm just going to fall back on uh, what modern diesel engine specs would be. Um, just kind of uh, using the same uh, general specifications I use at the dealership. Um, really, even on the modern engines, they're pretty lenient on a lot of these things. You can get by with about four thousandths long way, um, two to three, sometimes even four, the short way across two. Um, honestly, guys, with these old blocks, I don't even get worried if they're at five, you know. But anyways, anyway, I'm starting with five. We'll just see where this is at. <clears throat> Just very gently set the straight edge down with the feeler under it and we have good tension on the gauge which means so far everything is looking like it's less than five thousandths off. So we go up in here, it's good there. there. So far we're looking good all around at five. Do one last check out here. Okay, everything's good at five. I'm already happy with it, but let's uh, let's decrease thickness, see what we get next. Okay, so to cut it down some more, I don't know if you can see, I'm right at 3 thousandths now. So let's do the same check at 3 and see if we still have tension on the gauge, which so far everything is looking good so far, even at 3 thousandths. All right, three thousandths, we're still tight all over. I'm telling you what, guys, I don't think it's worth even trying to get this thing machined, get it planed at that, but just for fun, let's take it down as thin as I can go. I've got the one and a half, and I've got the two thousandths. Let's see where we're at with those. Let's start right out with the one and a half, see what happens. Good there. Good there.
All right, so let's do one last check across the short way again with the one and a half. Let's just see where we are running with that. All good there. Good there. Good across the middle. Good across there. And we're good that way too. I like it. Honestly guys, it just doesn't need any more help. Um, you can flame me if you want. I really don't care. I'm not taking this out to be decked. It just doesn't need it. Um, I don't have excessive pitting either around the coolant bores. All of the critical sealing areas are in good shape. No nicks, no gouges where they're going to give me any problems. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, this thing is still within spec even for modern diesel engine standards, let alone 1939 tech. Uh, I know when these need help and I know when they don't and this one just doesn't. Besides, if I did have a machine shop deck this, they would also have to cut these counter bores down to the exact same depth in relation to the deck surface that they are right now. Um, sounds simple, but honestly, I've had that get screwed up on engines before, and it's not fun when that happens. Uh, if they did not get these counter bores cut to the exact same depth in relation to the deck surface as they are right now, it just opens up a whole new can of worms. Um, if they did not cut them deep enough, the liners would then be sitting up too high above the rest of the deck surface and it would hold the head gasket off of the rest of the block and cause potential leak points, right, leak paths for coolant and what have you there. If they cut these counter bores too deep, the sleeves would then be sitting too deep to put enough pressure on the combustion ring on the head gaskets. It would burn that head gasket out in short order. I would then have to be shimming these uh, the sleeves to get the proper protrusion that is a real pain. It's something you don't ever want to have to go through and besides even trying to find shims for these uh, these sleeves, these liners if you will, is almost possible now anyway. So honestly I'm just going to keep it right where it is and continue on. So next I'm going to chase nearly every threaded hole in this entire block. It just makes life easier when you have good clean threads, good bores to put those bolts in. And as you can see from this tap, it sure pulls a lot of gunk and crud and debris out of those holes. This just all around makes life easier for you. So now that all the threaded holes throughout the entire block have been cleaned, the next thing I need to do is check and make sure all the gasket surfaces are indeed flat. Um, it's pretty common on old engine blocks to see some displacement of some metal around the top edge of a threaded hole. Uh, some blocks will have a slight 45 degree chamfer cut around the, uh, the top part of um, a threaded hole to prevent that but these cat blocks don't, uh, don't have any of that. So we need to check all these really close and if I can work the light just right, you can see this kind of lighter area around the tip of the screwdriver on the edge of that hole, that is displaced metal from the tension of, of the bolt in that hole pulling up. So that is a high spot right there that could interfere with clamp load on a gasket. And we'll go back here can also see another kind of shiny area around that part of this hole. That is another high spot. That's all displaced metal. So I'm going to have to go over all of the flat surfaces on this entire block and address any high spots like that as needed. Now my preferred method of taking down high spots on flat surfaces is to use a rather worn out kind of dull and wide flat file. Um, I like them kind of worn out because they're not that aggressive. 
and you won't take any unwanted amounts of metal off of any place that isn't sticking up high. And as I go over that, you can see it's really turning shiny around all the high areas right now. Um, that is, there is quite a lot of metal that's been displaced around that edge of that hole, but just keep the file flat, keep even pressure all around, and eventually that will come down to be flat with the rest of the surface. You can see we're getting a little bit shiny there. It's nothing to be worried about on that edge. But you can feel the file drag as it's cutting. And we're starting to get less and less drag right now and it's starting to get to where I'd be pretty well happy with it. Also attack it from another angle. We've got that one pretty well flattened out right there. Now to move on to the one next to it. See that shiny area? You can really see where the high spot is, where that top thread started to pull. And that's just something that happens from years of tension from a bolt. There's been a lot of uh, heating and cooling cycles applied to this material as well, which will also contribute to that. Still feeling a little bit of a drag as I go over that. There, it's pretty much diminished now. So there, we've got those two flattened out. Just got to continue on the rest of the way down. So after a few minutes with the file, everything is pretty well flat, and you might as well stop when the original factory machining marks just start to take a little bit of a shine and start to become noticeable. That's when you know you're pretty well flat. Not the most glamorous type of work, but it is all necessary for block preparation. So uh, we're just about out of time once again out here in the shop. That's about all I got time for today. So we're gonna wrap the video right here, but uh, I'll continue on next time with um, running a bore brush through a lot of the oil passages in that block and then we'll give it one final cleaning and hopefully we'll be ready to start building an engine at that time. So as always guys, thanks for watching. Hope to see you back again.